Alright, so as you can see, I have added some more goo uh, to this uh, Roberd uh, connection point here with all the uh, servo and the BEC wire and the satellite wires, but uh, I put it on pretty thick. Uh, I think honestly the thicker the better as far as getting it removed, but it, shh, it removes pretty easy. So uh, with that said, I'm going to tuck this guy back around here. It's still a little soft, but solid enough for me to work with. All right, so let me get the side panel back on, get the Roberg kind of fitted in uh, to place. And basically I just need to get this worked in here. And the key to this is making sure I get those tabs lined up. be able to see them. There we go. So I got them on that side. Checking the back side, that's all good. So what I just need now is a, uh, a screw to kind of hold it down. Let me get some thread lock on it. So I'm going to tighten this one down right here by the row bird so that it can uh, make sure I capture that in place. That's nice and locked in. All right, so I'm gonna do this off camera so I can get it done quick. Uh, I'm gonna flip this up and basically uh, tuck this wire uh, back in there and then uh, insert in uh, the servo mount just like that. Get that into place and then, uh, and then I'll pick up uh, with you here. All right, so here I am. I'm uh, pretty much back to where I was before I started. Uh, I've got this KST servo now uh, installed in place of where the uh, the other servo was, the Phytech. Uh And I have basically all, uh, all the screws remounted. The Robert is back in place. Um, the only thing I don't have on right now is this canopy uh, mount. That's going to go right here. All right, so here's where I'm at uh, after reinstalling this uh, this new KST Tail servo. Uh, and as you can see, 
Um, everything is basically put back in. Uh, have all my screws back down. The only thing I don't have is this front battery tray. Uh, and that's because I still have this ESC out. Reason being is I've got the motor wires disconnected and until I'm ready to connect those back up and, uh, and, then, and then stick this down inside the front here, I'm just gonna leave it off. Uh, but everything is back down. I've got the new uh, zip tie here holding that. Um, debatable whether I actually need it or not. It looks like the wires uh, were, were fairly well out of the way anyway, but uh, I'd rather have the safety there of having it. Um, I have my tail servo uh, wire running along the side here. It's just kind of tucked up underneath the uh, the boom support there, so it doesn't doesn't really matter if it stays or not in that position, to be honest with you, but I kind of liked it tucked over there. Um, and that's it. Everything is back. Um, I have access still uh, to my to my gain pots uh, on the Robird. Uh, barely. I mean, it's not it's not going to be uh, super easy to get to, but I can get to both of them, uh, and hopefully I won't. Once I get them set up, I won't have to touch them again. Um, but that's it. So uh, now I can work on uh, getting this uh, tail servo adjustments made. And basically what I want to do is reduce the binding associated with the range of travel uh, of the servo. If I get too far out, uh, it binds up. So one thing I have done that I didn't talk about previously uh, on camera was this uh, control arm uh, a mounting bracket here. I did tighten this down. I didn't tighten it down originally uh, in the build. I wanted to wait till I got the, the tail servo mounted and then everything kind of in line and then I let it kind of naturally get to a position where it lined up well and then I tightened it down. I didn't, I didn't want to tighten it down before I got the tail servo all on and ready to go. So that's now tight um, and that's something that I didn't talk about previously. And I think everything else I have covered uh, to one degree or another. Um, I think that's about it. So what I want to do now is uh, go ahead and power up the heli um, and get the Robird connected in to, uh, to the USB, uh, connected up to the software so that I can make the adjustments uh, on the tail servo. All right, so let's look at this tail setup here. And uh, I kind of struggle with a little bit about um, what the true methodology is here uh, to adjust the tail slider and the, and the tail servo. So my, my servo horn is at 90 degrees to the servo. My uh, control rod obviously is at 90 degrees to my boom. And then we have this uh, little control arm that actually runs the pitch uh, of the um, blades from input from the servo. So as you can see, if I move the stick left and right, you can see this little arm down here below wag back and forth, right? So the initial center stick position is, I want this arm to be perpendicular to the boom, right? And perpendicular to the uh, control rod, which goes up to the servo, which is at 90 degrees. So basically I have a, I have a 90 degree at the servo uh, angle, and then a long connecting rod that comes to here, runs parallel with the boom, and then gives me a 90 degree that way. So what I found is there's this little mounting bracket uh, right here that uh, is, as far as I can tell, appears to be at 90 degrees to the boom, which is also 90 degrees to the, uh, to the link rod. So basically, if this bottom uh, control arm is parallel, is in line with this upper little brace, then I should be at 90 degrees. So as I move that around, you can see when I'm back at center, uh, that bottom piece is perfectly aligned with the top piece. I'm actually a little bit off center from the, uh, the center point, and what I think that does is it gives me just a little bit of pitch in the blades, which is what I want. As the, the software says, uh, I'm looking for uh, eight degree tail blades angle to compensate for the, um, 
main rotor torque. And then it says, or simply centered on the tail pitch slider. Well, in my opinion, those are two very different things. Do I want eight degrees pitch or do I want it centered on the slider? Um, I thought initially that centered on the slider equals eight degrees pitch, um, but I don't think that's actually the case. So what I was wondering is um, how to tell, uh, number one, if I'm centered on the slider, and number two, uh, what my pitch change is. So what I want to do to measure to find the center point is to move this to the far outside, get a measurement. That measurement is 8.24, uh, roughly 8.25, right? So if I split that in half, uh, basically I'm looking at a 4.12, 4. 4.12, 4.13, somewhere in that range. It doesn't have to be that exact. So 4.12 we'll go with. Um, so 4.12 is what I want it to be uh, when it's in its uh, neutral position. So let me get that to 4.12. I think we're close enough. That's fine. I could sit and play with that all day. So now what I want to do is uh, take my caliper Again, 4.14 is about where I'm at. Get it set into there, into that gap, and just close the gap until uh, it matches that. Oops, going the wrong way. And I want to feel it touch, but not, not, not too snug on it. All right, so that's about that. So with that said, if that's 4.14 in this case, if I double it, it'll be 8.28, somewhere in that range. So let's see what I get. Go back all the way out. Get a measurement, 8.23. I mean, we're pretty close. We're talking, you know, uh, hundreds of a, uh, of a millimeter. So um, at any rate, I think that this is going to be the best uh, indication of center on this tail slider. But with that said, now if you look at my... Uh, arm bar here, it is no longer parallel. Um, it's actually quite a bit off. The other thing is my blade pitch, and you can see it at the top here, um, and uh, I'll get it as straight on as I can for you, but it's basically zero pitch. Well, I know I don't want zero pitch at rest, um, and I know I want this servo arm uh, to be um, perpendicular to the rod, so I'm thinking that by default, center of the tail slider, uh, which is where I'm at right now, is zero pitch. But that's not where I want to leave it at. Um, and I think this is this is specific to this particular heli. So it's not that the Robird software is misleading; it's that this particular heli. It's my opinion that when I'm set with the proper perpendicular configuration of this uh, arm, which is somewhere right around there, then I have a little bit of pitch built into this. And now if, if we go back and we look at this pitch, uh, you can see there's a little bit of pitch built in there. And my guess is that's probably pretty close to eight degrees. Uh, eight degrees isn't very much. Uh, so rather than on this particular build, rather than following the guideline of centering the, uh, the arm on the tail slider, I think I'm going to go with the advice uh, and the recommendation to to make the uh, everything perpendicular, right? The servo arm at, at, is 90, and then uh, this control arm, which is under this boom, is perpendicular to this uh, arm here, and that basically centers all the mechanics. And while the mechanics are centered, the blade pitch is a, at about eight degrees, and that should by by default uh, reduce. Uh, any tail movement because of the rotor torque. That's the theory I'm running with. Um, you know, we'll see uh, when I get to flying if it makes sense or not. Um, but I, I think it's a pretty sound uh, uh, understanding um, from my vantage point anyway. Um, but it's all adjustable. So if I get, uh, you know, if I start to fly the heli and it's wrong, hey, I'll fix it. No big deal. Um, so the next thing I need to do really now, now that I have that kind of set, uh, is I want to I want to focus on the binding, 
And basically what I want to do is look at the left and right limits. Right, so if I move the rudder left, um, you can see I'm going to get to a point where I'm where I may actually tap out. Uh, in this case, it doesn't look like I'm there, but let's just, I've got some room to go actually. To get full use of that. So at full left, I can go to 109.8. Now the right, I have some binding. It stops long before I get to the end of my travel, which is why I burn up that last servo, because I left it, it got stuck in a, in a bound up position. So I know I'm going to be reducing this limit. And I basically want to move it I still have some binding there I think that's pretty good. Now I'm not sure if I'm happy entirely with the limits I'm at. I'm at a 63% on the right, 109.8 uh, on the left. But that's because remember, this thing is off center uh, a little bit, which means I mean, it makes sense. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm 40% moved over to get this uh, at an eight degree pitch at rest. Now, again, uh, the the ideal location is to get the seven to eight degree tail blade angle to compensate uh, torque from the main rotor. So, if that's the goal, I've met it right there. Um, So I'm going to leave it set up like that. I think I've reduced all the binding. And I've hit the mechanical limits. I've got a built-in uh, little bit of pitch here, which I'm assuming is around 8 degrees. Uh, I've got my uh, rod perpendicular, so I'm getting you know, fairly consistent resolution off of that center point. So when the stick is centered, if I move it to the left or I move it to the right, um, because it's moving the same distance from the from the center of the servo uh, 90 position, the resolution should be fairly equal. So uh, my thought is that um, how it how the heli responds to both of those should be similar, even though I'm technically not centered on this arm. So that's what I'm going to go with. Welcome to being the new guy. Uh, it's kind of fun to figure this out. Um, if I'm way off base, somebody let me know, but uh, that's how the mechanics seem to make sense to me. So, uh, again, uh, you know, the, the other option is to center this uh, on the slider, but that gives me a zero degree pitch, which seems to be counterintuitive to what I'm trying to solve here, which is countering that main rotor torque. So, uh, that's that. Now, what I need to do is uh, set up the limits of the cyclic pitch. Uh, and uh, basically to adjust as much throw as possible, and I'll show you that in the Robird software. Mm -hmm.